Welcome to Art 109. Kathy here, and we're going to start right in with our first lecture, which is on Assignment 1, the Basic Tools of Illustrator. We'll start by opening up Module 1 and going right into Assignment 1. Assignment 1 has some uh, learning objectives, which you'll want to take a quick look at. First, to demonstrate understanding of the basic tools of Illustrator, and second, to express ability to follow detailed instructions, regardless of creative objective. This assignment is not a terribly creative assignment, not really a design assignment, so much as an introduction to the tools that we'll be using in Illustrator for this course. Our first step is to construct a template, and the second step will be to fill the boxes of the template. So today's lecture really just is concerned with constructing the template that we will be using. Um, lecture one right here, this is a link to the actual lecture that you are now hearing, and here's a link to the PDF template which shows the instructions. So we're going to be opening a new 8.5 by 11 inch file in Illustrator and setting it up to the specs indicated on this template. Please click this template to download it, and you can um, take a look at our instructions by clicking on the PDF template and opening it up. The um, instructions that are written in red here are simply our notes to follow. The things that are that appear in black on the template are the actual shapes and text that you're going to be creating. So you'll notice that we're uh, asked to make six square boxes, each two and a half inches in width and height. We're asked to make sure that the first box is a half, an inch and a half from the left side and an inch and a half from the top of the page. And we're asked to position the boxes one half inch apart. We're asked to put some text in 12 point aerial type. So let's go into Illustrator now and see how we'll do all those things. I'm going to open Illustrator. If you are working with Illustrator CC 2017, which you will be if you're working in the lab or if you're working with the Creative Cloud and updated version of Illustrator, you'll get a page when you first uh, open Illustrator that shows the recent projects that you've been working on. We're going to hit Create New, and this will take us to a page that allows us to open files. The recent items often will be very useful. I, in fact, last worked with an 8.5 by 11 inch letter size document, but I want to show you how to find these just in case you don't have that in your recent documents. If you click on print and all, all the documents that we'll be using for this particular course are going to be uh, found under print, you'll see a bunch of standard options that can be opened. We want the letter option. You'll notice that this one is set up in points rather than in inches, and I can change my document from points to inches or millimeters or centimeters, whatever I would like, pixels. Uh, I'm going to choose inches, however, because that's the, um, those are the dimensions called out in the um, template that we're following. We get to choose an orientation here, either portrait or landscape. We want portrait. We only need one artboard. We don't have to worry about bleed or color mode for this. We're simply going to hit create at this point. This will open up our file, and then we're going to take a look at the Illustrator window. A bunch of tools down the left-hand side of the page, a bunch of uh, menu items across the top here. The first thing we're going to do is change the view slightly. We're going to ask Illustrator to give us um, some rulers here. Here we go. Show rulers. We're also going to ask Illustrator to show us a grid. This gives us a grid. By default, it will be a grid set up in inches. This grid is transparent and does not print, but you may find it helpful when you're beginning to align things. Now, the first thing we have to do in Illustrator is to create a series of boxes. We're going to use the rectangle tool to create these boxes. You'll notice that some of the tools have little tiny triangles in the bottom. Those mean that there are different tools hidden underneath. And if you, if you mouse over the tool and click and hold, you'll see all the different options. This is the shape tool stack. It may be that the last person who used your copy of Illustrator um, used the ellipse tool. And in that case, it will be on top of the stack, but the rectangle tool will be hidden underneath 
in all the shape tools. There we go. So we're going to choose the rectangle tool. Once we've chosen the rectangle tool, we could start about a, an inch and a half from the top and bottom and click and drag a rectangle. Because our guides are on, you will notice that Illustrator is telling me as I drag this rectangle how big it is. And I could use those indications down there to help me judge when I have a rectangle that's two and a half inches by two and a half inches, as the um, instructions call out. My rectangle wasn't exactly two and a half inches square, but I want my rectangle exact. So I'm going to open the transform window so that I can see exactly where and how big my rectangle is. The the size of the rectangle is indicated in the width and height measurements here. And as you can see, I got pretty close just by eyeballing my rectangle and dragging it. But I'm going to type in exactly two and a half inches. And then you'll notice if I uh, click somewhere in the transform window, my rectangle jumps to the exact size. I also want my rectangle to be exactly an inch and a half from the left side and an inch and a half from the top. Those dimensions are called the X and Y dimensions, and they are measured from whatever point is indicated on this little icon right here, the reference point icon. You'll notice that right now, the reference point icon is measuring the upper left corner of my square. And for its X dimension, it's measuring its it's um, distance from the left side, which is almost 1.5. Let's just make that 1.5 because Illustrator is good at making things exact. The Y dimension is measured from the top of the file, and you'll notice that that's a little bit greater than 1.5. I'm going to simply make it exactly 1.5. And again, if I click within the window, you'll see the box jump ever so slightly until it's exactly in position. These dimensions in your transform window tell you that you have answered that, that part of the problem. Um, so now we're going to look at the rectangle itself that we've created. I'm going to choose, first of all, my black selection tool in the upper left hand corner. The two selection tools here, the black and the white or direct selection tool, are some of your most important tools. Whenever an object in Illustrator is chosen with the black selection tool, the whole thing will be highlighted. And in that case, you're going to be able to move it around very easily. And you're thinking, oh my, she just messed up our X and Y dimensions. I don't want to do that. So I am going to hit Command Z, which undoes the last thing you just did. It'll be Control Z if you happen to be using a Windows computer in the lab. You can also undo the last thing you did by clicking Edit Undo. The, um, that's one of my favorite commands, Edit Undo or Control Z. We'll be using that a lot. The black selection tool will also allow you to resize anything that you've just created or anything that you have selected by pulling on a corner um, handle. You can change the scale of the box. You can reflect the box. You can transform the box in many different ways. You can distort it. I'm going to con control Z or command Z all those things to get back to where I had the box originally an inch and a half from the top and I'm checking those dimensions in my transform window. If I want to uh, change the dimensions of my box without changing its proportions, in other words leaving it a square, I simply hold the shift key down as I pull and you'll notice then that as my um, box changes its dimensions, the X and Y are changing, the width and height are changing, but they're remaining identical to each other. I'm going to control Z or command Z or control Z that so that I get back to my two and a half inch box. Shift is a very, very powerful sh keyboard shortcut, and it's good to learn to use shift as you start. In fact, if I had started drawing my box with the rectangle tool using the shift key held down, I would only be able to draw a, a square. 
Shift constrains. It will constrain a rectangle to a square. It will constrain a, an ellipse to a circle. It will constrain many other actions in Illustrator. So I'm going to delete that one. I've now got a square that has a black line around it, and it seems to have a white fill. You'll notice that my uh, grid has disappeared where the square is, and that's because my square happens to have a fill. Let's look at the stroke and fill icons here. An illustrator path, by um, default, I suppose you'd say, is simply a theoretical path. It's a vector. It's a mathematical uh, algorithm that Illustrator has drawn for me when I, when I use this tool. And by default, it really doesn't have any physical presence. You have to give it. You have to choose a stroke for its outline if you want one and a fill for its interior filling if you want one. Let's look at the stroke options here. This, I can choose a stroke of any different color or value. I can also change the width of the stroke. Right now it's a one point stroke by default, but I could make it a 20 point stroke. Um, I can change its stroke by giving it, instead of a uniform profile, a crazy profile. It, all sorts of calligraphic profiles are available under this window here, and you will see them change as I mess with them. Instead of a basic stroke, I could give it, whoops, let's open up that window a little bit further here. There we go. I could give it, for example, an airbrush stroke or a charcoal stroke. But um, I can give it a fancy colored stroke, although in this assignment we are confined to using black and white. So if I give it a colorful stroke like this, I need to, get, I need to uh, take the color out of it before I turn my assignment in. So for the box, of course, we want a uniform basic stroke in one point. But for the lines and the shapes that we will put in the boxes later on, we may wish to use a lot of wildly different strokes. For the fill, this has a white fill, and it will print paper white. So when printing, there is no distinction between a white fill and no fill. But you will notice that when I click no fill, the white disappears, and I can see the very pale uh, imaginary grid that is in my uh, document box. Let's give the box no fill for now so that you get used to, to the difference. Got my first box. That was a lot of trouble. It seems like it ought to be easier than that to make my second box. And what we're going to do is simply copy the first box by holding the Alt key down as you drag the box across. We are moving the box just the way we would move the box if we were trying to change its position on the file, but in this case we are actually dragging a copy of the box. My little pink smart guides there tell me that I am maintaining the same Y value for my box, but I may not have the correct X value. In other words, I may not have that exact half inch in there. Let's look at the transform window. The transform window shows us the properties of whatever object in the file is selected. And so right now we're seeing that we have the right width and height, and we should, because this is a copy of the first box. We have the correct Y value, and we should, because I dragged it straight across. But the X value isn't quite right. We haven't dragged the box in exactly, uh, at exactly a half an inch. And the, um, the X value, of course, should be 4.5 for this. I've done the math on it. We're measuring, remember, from the upper left reference point. That's this reference point of the box. If you happen to have any other reference point clicked on your reference point icon, simply click the left upper left corner, and it should now be four and a half inches from the left edge. That's an inch and a half for the margin, two and a half inches for the box next to it, and a half an inch for the path. So mine is a little bit too big. Let's make it 4.5 exactly. We'll click in the window and we'll see the box jump to its correct position. Now, instead of doing this every time, we're simply going to select the two boxes together and drag them down 
twice to create the last two boxes. To select together, we, are, we have two different options. Using the black selection tool, we can either draw a selection marquee around the two boxes to get them both selected. I'm going to select away again in order to unselect the boxes. We can also select one box and then hold the shift key down to select the other box. This is a very useful thing when you have a complicated selection to make. This one is simple enough that it would be easy to simply dra drag a marquee around them. The shift tool will either add to or subtract from a selection. So if I have a multiple selection like this and I want to deselect something, I simply hold the shift key down and click on it. And then I have uh, that item deselected and only part of the original selection still chosen. Right now I'm going to deselect and draw a selection marque around both so that I have them both selected. And then I'm going to click somewhere on the path besides a handle so that I don't accidentally change the scale of my boxes. And then holding the Alt key down, I am going to drag a copy down. I'm going to try to drag them about half an inch. I can uh, use my little um, difference in Y down there to, sh uh, to sh give me a guide here. I'm using the little pink guides to let me see that I'm not changing the X value this time. I'm going to drag another copy, again holding the Alt key down, and I'm trying to drag it about a half an inch, but I know that I can go back to my transform window and check the orientation of all these boxes. You'll notice now, if you look in the transform window, that the width of the selection has changed. Illustrator is measuring the width not just of one box now, but of the double selection. So your width should be 5.5 if you have two boxes selected like I do. The height should still be two and a half inches. The X dimension should be 1.5 because Illustrator is measuring the distance from the left side of the page to this reference point on the upper left corner of the entire selection. The Y should be seven and a half inches, and I'm going to make it that. That's measuring the inch and a half from the top of the page, the dimensions of the boxes, which add up to five inches, the dimensions of the margins between the boxes, which should add another inch. So if you've made that seven and a half inches, click in the transform window and you will see your boxes jump to their actual precise measurement. We didn't check the, um, the transform window on these boxes, so we're going to do that real quick. Again, width should be 5.5, height should be 2.5, x should be 1.5, and if you trust me on the math, y should be 4.5 click in the transform window and you will see the boxes jump ever so slightly. Now they should be set up exactly according to our PDF template. An inch and a half from the top, an inch and a half from the side, each of the boxes two and a half inches, all the margins in between one half inch. The last thing we are to do is to create the um, label for our file. For this we are going to use the type tool. Click on the T here in order to get the type tool and click anywhere in the file. I'm going to click up somewhere near where I want these things to land in order to get a chance to choose your type character and your um, uh, opacity and your alignment and everything like that. So we're going to choose, there we go. Um, clicking on the uh, little arrow here next to the uh, type face window, we're going to scroll up to the A's and find Arial because that's what was called out in the um, PDF. We're going to choose Arial Regular. Uh, we can choose the font size right here. We want 12 point type, we want 100% opacity, and we want black. So thank you very much. We now have a, um, an automatic um, demonstration, Laura Mipsum, the, the autofill for, for type. If you find that annoying, you can go to Illustrator Preferences and under Type, you can turn off Fill New Type Objects with Placeholder 
text. That's an, an option, and there are many, many other options that you can choose under preferences here. So we're going to go back now, and I'm going to type in my name. Trying to spell it correctly. I'm going to hit return just as I would in a word processing program and type in my project name. And again, I'm going to check my spelling here. <laughs> hit return and type in the uh, class name, Art 109 Online. Now, type in Illustrator, any sort of um, type like this, is an object. And if you choose it with the black selection tool, you can do all the things that you can do with any other object. You can resize it. Let's control Z that or command Z it. You can resize it holding the shift key down so that you don't change its proportions as you resize it. Control Z that again because I have um, a, a requirement for 12 point font. You can distort it in all those ways. You can reflect it. You can, um, uh, you can use a lot of different options and so forth on it. But the um, other thing that you can do is move it exactly into the place where you want it. So if you grab it somewhere besides a handle, you can change its position. And right now my smart guides are on. I should show you actually how to get those smart guides in case you want them and you don't have them. There they are right here. Just click on them if they're not chosen. And uh, smart guides will, will let you know when you are lining things up, when you are moving things in perfect verticals and horizontals and so forth. The other way that you can adjust type is with the arrow keys on your keyboard. And in fact, uh, with your selection, uh, black selection tool chosen and your object selected, you can nudge any item back and forth like this using the arrow keys on the keyboard. I find this especially helpful using type. I'm also going to zoom in so that I get the alignment of my type um, just the way I want it. You can zoom in by... Um, choosing Command or Control if you're on a Windows computer, and the plus key. And I'm going to just zoom in very, very carefully here and nudge my type up and over and back until I'm happy with the alignment. This is a design choice, which I will leave up to you, exactly how you will align your type. I'm going to hit the minus key now in order to zoom out. And that's uh, box one. I'm going to select away to show you what the whole thing should look like. And I'm going to save it. I recommend that you save in two places, say to a thumb drive as well as, your, as to your computer. And that ends the first lecture, uh, building the template. We will look in the next lecture at filling the boxes as we get to know the tools of Illustrator. See you then.